Hi everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring and today is Saturday, October 19th, 2024. Hey, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for coming and visiting me this weekend for my weekend review podcast. I uh, hope you had a good trading week. Uh, markets uh, up there all time highs. So um, the format for today is first of all, we're going to run the US Legal Slamer. Secondly, we're going to come back. We're going to take a look at all the positions that I have, all the trades that I made last week. We're going to talk about when I entered the trade. We're going to talk about why I entered the trade. What were the signals? What were the confluences? Uh, we're going to talk about where I placed my end of day stop my emergency stop we're going to talk about how i take partial profits if the move uh if the uh, market starts moving my way uh, we're going to talk about getting into trailing stop level and what we do there and then we're going to also talk about significant overhead resistance levels of where i may exit the entire trade so, so we'll go through all of those, uh, both the uh, winning trades, the losing trades, the open positions, the closed positions, and uh, hopefully this will give you a good idea of how I look at trading and how I structure my trades and how I position size. Um, you know, it's very important in trading that you have a, an exact process of what you're gonna do regardless of what the market does. If the market does this, then I'm gonna do that. If the market does that, then I'm gonna do this. You know, you're always the most objective before you're in a trade. You really need to create a trade plan. So no matter what happens, you know what to do. And we'll talk about the position sizing too, because position sizing is, position sizing is extremely important because if you do it the correct way, and I'll show you the formula of how I use it, then you know what the worst case scenario is gonna be. And you have to be okay with that worst, worst case scenario. And then you put the trade on and it's gonna do what it's gonna do. You don't have any control of it, wish we did, but we don't. We only have control of what we are gonna do once the trade's in place and we need that plan in place before that position goes on. It's very important everybody to have a process and to follow the process every day consistently on every trade. The more I trade, and I've traded for 29 years now, the more every day that goes by, I understand how important this is and why you really need to do it. Okay, so after we go through the trades, we will talk a little bit about trader psychology. It is the most important skill in trading, the ability to, like I just mentioned, um, to create that plan and follow it. But, you know, some days we feel this way. Some days we feel that way. Some days we're more optimistic. Some days we're less optimistic and we can have impulse control problems and all sorts of things. So again, creating that plan and then following that plan is very important. And, and that's psychology. That's in your brain. That's between your ears. So I always like to talk a little bit about that because, you know, in, in the long run, the psychology portion of trading is the most important. And then after that, uh, I have gone down through my watch list, both on the uh, daily timeframes and the weekly timeframes, and I have identified some potential trades for next week um, that I'm interested in. Now, these markets are not what the ones I'm going to show you, they're not where they need to be yet because if they were there, I probably would have already taken the trade. But what I like to do on the weekends is uh, on Friday nights, I like to go through my watch list and just go down through one by one and say, you know, if this stock got down here, that would make sense because down here, there's this, that, the other, so forth and so on. Um, you know, I really suggest to you that you do this, that take a look at a chart, and go, boy, if it got there, that would be the sweet spot. That would be the sweet spot because, you know, you have confluences, maybe you have a 200 day moving average, you have an under over 30, you have a double um, bottom bullish divergence, this, that, and the other. It will really improve your trading if you can do this. That's why patience is so important in trading, just waiting for the market to get down exactly where you want and then you can consider taking the trade. It doesn't mean that that's gonna be a profitable trade, but it will increase your chances to be a profitable trade. You know, one of the ones is UNG. And I just entered UNG last, uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. 
And I had talked about UNG uh, for a couple weeks now when I said, you know, if it got to this spot, that would really be the spot. And I waited and I waited and I waited and Friday it got there. So, you know, if I'm going to wait a couple weeks for a market to get to that spot and then it gets there, well, I'm probably going to take the trade, right? Because it really did get exactly almost to the penny of where I wanted it to uh, to get to and that's where it stopped going down so we'll see you know who knows no no guarantee that's going to be a profitable trade for me but i looked at it uh you know before it happened and i said if it gets there that's the spot and i'll go through why that was the spot there's multiple reasons why that was the spot and uh i took the trade and we'll see what and we'll see what happens all right so I hope it's going to be helpful for you uh, going through the trades, uh, taking a look at the potential trades for next week. And, you know, if you find anything helpful in this podcast today, I really would appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up button. It really does help the channel. It lets YouTube know there's some valuable content. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, that helps out the channel as well. So, okay. Uh, before we get rolling, let's run that U.S. legal disclaimer. Hang tight. I'll be back in about 40 seconds. Thank you. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get rolling. So this is Pfizer. Uh, now I do trade seven different types of setup, seven different types of strategies. So as we go from trade to trade, I'll uh, let you know what the strategy is. You know, each strategy is different. Uh, but this is Pfizer, and you can see this green box here. This is called a bullish fair value gap. And a, a fair value gap is, it takes three bars. This bar, this bar, and this bar. And you can see we made a low here. We made a lower low here. On this big up bar here on the 9th of September, this big up bar uh, was important because it was a big impulsive up bar that took out the previous swing high. What this did, the, the reason that's important is that this changed the market structure from a downwards bearish market structure to a bullish up up, upward structure, right? A bullish market structure. And the reason it takes three bars is because on this big up day here, all it did was go up. There was no back test of this area. So we have three bars, bar one, bar two, bar three. The After it changes market structure to the upside, you, you, you have this untested area in here, the high of bar one, the low of bar three. This is ICT strategy. You can take a look at him on YouTube as well. This is uh, where I learned this strategy from. And so when you change market structure to the upside, I, I don't want to just go ahead and chase that market structure. I want to wait for the market to pull back into that fair value gap. I want the market to come back and test that area. But, you know, big picture, when you change market structure from bearish market structure to a bullish market structure, you want to buy the dips. Conversely, if you change market structure from a bullish market structure to a bearish market structure, uh, the move there, in my opinion, is to short the rips or short the rallies, okay? So had the, had the green area here because of the, the bullish fair value gap, I didn't chase it. I waited for it to come back and actually close the gap. And I got long here at 28.85. So as soon as you have a signal and it all makes sense, like this makes sense, the most important 
really the most important thing in the world is what your position size is going to be. It doesn't matter how good the setup is, uh, you know, because maybe out of a hundred times you get this setup, 30% of the time you lose and 70% of the time you win. Well, you know, you have to have a reasonable market. Uh, you have to have a reasonable position size because remember 30% of them lose. So, you, you, you know, you could really get hurt, right? In the long run, yes, makes money, but on any one trade, you can lose money. So you have to have a reasonable position size. And what I do is I use this formula. Let's just say I have a $50,000 account. So a $50,000 account, I times that by 1%. 1% of 50,000 is $500. If you had a hundred thousand dollar trading account, one percent would be a thousand. If you have a million dollar trading account, one percent would be ten thousand, right? So let's just go with the fifty thousand dollar trading account times one percent is five hundred. Oops, five hundred. What is going on? Five hundred dollars. Now I take that five hundred dollars and I divide it by the value of the two ATR. The ATR means average true range. So Every day, based upon the last 20 days, you'll have whatever, whatever the average range is. Well, I want two times that. So I take that $500, I divide it by the value, right now is 112. And that would tell me to, I don't know what's going on with my mouse. Divide it by 1.12. One, okay, 446 shares. So if I have a $100,000 trading account, 1% of that is $500. Divide that by the two ATR that tells me to buy 446 shares. So the first thing I do when I buy those 446 shares is I then place my emergency stop exactly the value of the two ATR down below. So that if it does get down there, how much have I lost? If I have 446 shares, and it goes down a dollar twelve. Well, then I've lost five hundred dollars, right? Because we did the math, the math correctly. So the good news is this five percent. Uh, I'm sorry, this emergency stop down here only is going to trigger, in my experience, about five percent of the time. The other ninety-five percent of the time, if you have a loss on the trade, it will be your end of bar stop. Now, on a bullish fair value gap, I like to look to the most recent swing low, which was here at 28.28. And if I get a closing, uh, if, if the price closes below that swing low, then I'm just going to be out of the trade. But you can see closing below here is higher than here. So most likely 95% of the time, your trade, your, your loss is not going to be the 1%, it will be much, much less. And, you know, depending on the strategy, you place the, your end of bar stops at, at different places. It just depends on the strategy that you're working on. And these bullish fair value gaps, um, the, the end of day stop is less defined as it is with other ones, like a 200 day moving average. That one's very simple. If it close, if it stays above, you, you stay in, if it closes below, you, you get out. But I, I just like to look after I take the trade, the most recent swing low, and that was here. Okay. So um, I, I know what my emergency stop is, it closed below uh, the swing low. My uh, uh, my end of bar stop will close below the swing low. I have my emergency stop down here. And by the way, the end of bar stops, I, I wait for the end of the day. I wait for the close. But with an emergency stop, I don't care if it's one minute after the market opens or one minute after the market closes. If it gets there, then I'm immediately going to get out. Okay, so uh, I have this signal. I position size correctly. I have my two stops in place. Now, the next thing I do is that I take the value of the 1.5 ATR. Right now, it's 84 cents. It changes every day. And I take my entry price and I go up the value of 1.5 ATRs and I put a line there. That's my trailing stop level. So if I get to my trailing stop level, then another if then statement comes into play, which is if I get to trailing stop level and I have a close below a previous bar's low, then I'm gonna get out of half.
All right, so, and this is the orange line here. Now, everything I've talked about so far, the position sizing, the emergency stop, the end of bar stop, the trailing stop level, these are all defensive moves. These are all built in for the purpose of if something goes against me, I'm going to get out of the trade. But I also like to play offense. So, you know, every great sports team, you need to play offense and defense. And so far, we've only talked about defensive moves. So offensive moves, the way that I use them is that if the price once I enter the trade, if the price moves up a certain amount from the previous bar's close, then I'm going to take a little partial profit, 10% to be exact. I'll take 10% of however many shares I have remaining if it gets to this level. And I place three levels. So if it gets to the first level, I'm going to take 10% of the remaining shares. If it gets to the second level, I'm going to take another 10%. If it gets to the third level, I'm going to take another. And let me show you how I do that. So, uh, like I said, it's always based upon the closing price. So right now the closing price is 29.22. So I take 29.22, and now I have the value of the 0.45 ATR. Right now the value of the 0.45 ATR, as you can see here, is 25 cents. So I take the closing price, 29.22, I add 25 cents to it, for Monday now, my first profit target is 29.47, right? The closing price plus 25 cents, 29.47. That's my first profit target on Monday. Then I take my first profit target on Monday, I add the value of the 0.45 to it again, which is again 25 cents plus 0.25. Second profit target on Monday is 29.72. And I do it one more time, 29.72 plus 25 cents. My third profit target for the day is 29.97. These are limit orders for 10% of the remaining shares that I have going into that day at the three different profit targets. You know, if it moves up decently, it moves up at least 25 cents, I'll take something. I'll take one off. You know, if you have a if you hit two profit targets in a day. That's a good day, right? Now you've taken 20% of the remaining shares off. Sometimes you get three. It has to be a pretty big move to get three, but you can do it. I mean, I, I think I've hit seven or eight profit targets in a day before, but of course that has to be a, a, a really, really big day. Okay, so that is the plan for the trade. We have a bullish market structural reversal. We came back into the fair value gap. I got long 28.85, I positioned size correctly, I placed my emergency stop, the value of two ATRs below, I have my end of bar stop here at the bottom of this swing at 28.28, I placed my trailing stop level 1.5 ATRs above, and like I said, I waited for it to come back down into the bullish fair value gap, I got long 28.85. Next day, didn't do much, went up a little, but not enough for me to have any profit targets. Next day, we had a big move up. I did, I believe, it's been a while ago, but I believe I hit two profit targets in here. So I took 20% of the position off into the strength. Into strength. Now, not only did, did I have a big up day here and took profit targets, I also got to trailing stop level, which means again, now, if in the future I have a close below a previous bar's low, I'm going to get out of half of the remaining shares. So next day, gapped, let me see here. Yeah, okay. So next day, uh, uh, opened, came back down, no profit targets. Next day, gapped up, but not enough for a profit target. But then here on the 19th of September, I had my first close below a previous bar's low after reaching trailing stop level, I took off half of the remaining shares. But also on that day, do you see how the day before we closed below and then we, we gapped up and went much higher? Well, because I'm playing offense, I took some profits off up here because I had those standing limit orders in there, right? I mean, this moved minimum of one 
uh, 0.45 ATR. I'm not sure if it did two. I don't think so, but I think it was just one. So I did get some at the very top before it reversed. Then we have a close below a previous bar's low. I sold half of the remaining shares for a gain of 2.73%, and I still keep half. You know, I really like taking off half half positions because it's about the only win-win in trading that you're going to have. Because if you take off half and it keeps going up, you're glad you're you're really glad you still have half. If you take off half and it goes down, you're really glad that you sold half. So anyway, that's why I like to take off halves in my trading. And you can see at the time it was a good decision that I took off half here because we came down, we came down. We got right on this particular day, we got right to my trail, or we got right to my uh, uh, end of our stop, but we didn't get there. Remember, we have to close. Then we had a big reversal, and then we came down again. But you can see here on the third and the fourth, look, it got right to that level, but closed above, which kept me in. Again, tested it right to that level, closed above, kept me in the trade. And then we had this huge gap up the next day where I believe I did hit three profit targets, which was really nice, right? Then we had to move down. And then we had another big day here on the ninth where I hit two or three profit targets. Again, taking advantage and selling into the strength. And then we've moved down and we've chopped around a little bit, went down, had a profit target here on the 15th. And then so we're just sitting right here. So it's been kind of a really choppy, sloppy trade, but it's definitely been uh, a, a good trade so far. And the remaining shares that I have on Pfizer up 1.3%. But again, because of taking the partial profits on the big moves up, I'm certainly up more than that on the trade. So anyway, good example here of position sizing, placing your stops, taking partial profits into strength and having a rule and having a process. You know, the best thing that could happen here on this trade, of course, is it just keeps moving up. If it keeps moving up, I'll continue to take partial profits. If it gets to the point where I have a 65 RSI level right now, it's 5022. Then I have another rule that comes into play, which is I'll use the five EMA as a trailing stop. Uh, that, that's one rule. Or if we get up to the 70 RSI and reject the 70 RSI, then I'm going to take off half. And then after that happens, if I have a close below previous bar slow, I'll be out of the position. So I know this may sound complicated. I, I do have a lot of rules, but I have every single rule that's in here is for a reason. Like I said, I've traded for 29 years. And by the way, you know, if you would like to learn all the strategies that I use and teach every day, um, and be able to trade and, and to be able to understand all the rules, you know, like the back of your hand. Um, I do teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons in the evening time via Skype. It's a 15 hour course. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's the best way for anyone to learn anything is one-on-one -on -one with their instructor. I have taught people for many, many years uh, all around the world from absolute beginners all the way up to the hedge fund level. So if you're interested, I know you would learn a lot and uh, I'd love to work with you. And uh, I think you'd be very happy that you took the course and you really have a skill that you can use the rest of your life. So if you're interested, my email is in the link of this YouTube video. Just reach out to me and uh, we can start to discuss it, but it'd be great to have you as a client. So, okay, so Pfizer here, remaining shares up 1.3%. So I spent a little bit more time on this because it's the first position. I was just trying to lay out some of the the rules and so forth. And as we go forward here, uh, I won't uh, uh, I won't spend as much time. Okay, so that's Pfizer, Boeing. All right, let's go to Boeing. Okay, so Boeing here. This is a long term trend line. You can see this move down here. What it does is it connects the bottoms, and on the 11th of October, we went from under the trend line back over the trend line. Now, I didn't buy it here. A lot of times when you break above a, a trend line, you'll have kind of a back test before it starts to move up. And that's exactly what happened. So I waited for the next day because we 
went below the trend line again and then closed above the trend line. So it was a, a test of the trend line that was successful. So I got in here on the 14th at 148.90. I position size the way I'm supposed to, 1% of my account divided by the value of the two ATR, right? I placed my emergency stop two ATRs below. But in this case, my end of our stop is simply a close below this trend line. And, you know, in trading, it's very important to have a good risk to reward. So, you know, you can see the closing price on this day was pretty close to the this trend line. So if the next day had it just closed below the trend line, I simply would have been out. I mean, I have the emergency stop down here in the worst case scenario, right? Uh, so I got long 148.90 position size correctly. I know where my two stops are. I placed my trailing stop 1.5 ATRs above. The next day, moved my way. I took a little profits, right? I hit a profit target. Next day, moved up again. Uh, I can't remember if I hit a profit target on that or not. Next day, moved up again. Um, now am, I am at trailing stop level. I got to trailing stop level. It doesn't mean I do anything. It just means that now in the future, if I have a close below a previous bar's low, now I'm going to get out of half of the position. Um, we do have earnings coming out here on the 23rd. So I never hold through earnings. Sometimes I wish I would have. Uh, I'll show you a trade a little bit later in the podcast on uh, Walgreens uh, that I had to get out of because that's my rule. But there's many times that I get out of a trade before earnings and I'm really glad that I did. You know, as, as traders, our number one priority should, should be to conserve the money that we have, not to make money. I know it sounds a little strange, uh, but if you concentrate on not losing money, that's how you make money. If you concentrate on making money, that's how you lose money, right? And holding through earnings is a very good way to lose money quickly. So for me personally, I just don't, I just don't do it, all right? Sometimes I wish I had, but a lot more, a lot of times I'm glad that I didn't. So regardless of where we are um, on this trade, I will get out before earnings. And I did just see a news article before I started the podcast that it looks like Boeing, uh, they made an agreement on the, uh, with the, the workers that are on strike. So that's probably good news for Boeing. And uh, maybe we'll have a big up day on Monday. I'm not sure. Never know. You just never know. So the, uh, uh, the remaining shares that I have on the Boeing trade, doing pretty good, up 3.97%. But again, I will be out prior to earnings. All right. So that's Boeing. And uh, this is, uh, uh, it's a long-term trend line strategy. But in addition to that, and again, this is something that I teach in my course. The, the other thing that drew my attention to this trade, because I like to have multiple confluences of things going on. So yes, we have the, you know, the close under the break above the trend line, the back test of the trend line. Yes, that was the trigger. But look, look over here at this down move. You see how deep the red bars are? This, these, this is MACD. MACD is a, a measure of momentum. So it's going down, going down. MACD is very red. Well, then we have a little rally and then we go lower. I mean, we're definitely lower here than we were over here, right? But do you see how now we don't have any red bars? This just means that from a MACD momentum standpoint, that the trade is running out of oomph. It's running out of downward momentum, or in other words, you are running out of you're running out of seller selling momentum. And if you run out of selling momentum, you run out of sellers. Well, then the market usually will go the other way. And so I have a double bottom bullish divergence here, uh, and then the actual trigger was the break. Of the trend line the back test of the trend line giving me a good risk reward ratio so uh like i said i like to always have multiple confluences uh they don't have to be multiple entry triggers but something like a double bottom bullish divergence or or so forth and again i teach the double bottom bullish divergences the atr divergences the rsi divergences in my course so boeing up 3.97 percent not too bad all right, let's go to TLT. All right, so I took this trade, this TLT trade uh, on Thursday. Now, why did I take this trade? Well, this is what's called an abandoned baby or a, an island reversal. 
uh, this one particularly is called an abandoned baby. So what is an abandoned baby? Uh, I love abandoned babies. I love island reversals. An abandoned baby is, you see here the bar with the green. The prior day we gap down, right? We just gap down. So for whatever reason, overnight, uh, the sentiment, news, whatever it was, was bad on TLT. Boom. However, the very next day, we gap up. So we went from being very bearish overnight to very bullish overnight. So a very decisive, quick move in sentiment. Sentiment bad, sentiment good. So when this happens, um, in my experience, about 70% of the time, when you look out into the future, that market is going to be higher. Now, let's look at the opposite. Look here, the red bar. Look, we gapped up. Boom. Everyone's excited and the morning gaps up and then the very next day gaps down. So we went from being very bullish to very bearish very quickly. And look what happened in the future. Down. Here, same thing. This is not an abandoned baby. Abandoned baby consists of only one bar. If you have two or more bars, it's the same as the abandoned baby. You just have more bars. So we gapped up, we gapped down. In the future, you're probably going to be lower. Certainly was. Again, here's the bearish abandoned baby. In the future, you're probably going to be lower. And if you look back in the past, look here. Abandoned baby, down, up. This signifies that in the future, you're going to be higher. Were you higher? 100%. I took that trade. Look here. Gap down. Uh, this is an uh, island reversal. Gap down, one day sideways, up signifies in the future you're it's going to be a bullish you're, you're going to probably have higher prices I mean, look at this bullish bullish signal bullish signal was it right absolutely i took that trade i took this trade to the upside i didn't take this trade to the downside but you can see really how accurate they are about 70 percent of the time in my opinion okay not 100 percent of the time so what again why did i take the trade we gapped down we gapped up showing a bull uh, showing that more likely than not in the future it's going to be higher i didn't buy it here the very next day because after you have these abandoned babies this bullish gap down gap up a lot of the time it will come back and test and close the gap the high of that abandoned baby well that's exactly what happened i got long here on thursday at 9376 so on this particular strategy i don't phase out i don't have trailing stop levels this is the one strategy where i don't do this i i what i do is something very very simple one of two things is going to happen i put my emergency stop down two ATRs and I place a profit target up here for ATRs. Keep in mind, in my experience, this works about 70% of the time. So the math here is that if everything stays consistent with, with my experience, 30% of the time, I'm going to lose two ATRs. 70% of the time, I'm going to make four ATRs. So I can have two losing trades in a row and then if I have one winning trade, it pays for both losing trades because I'm making twice as much as I'm losing. So I'm just set this on autopilot. This is either going to hit my two ATR stop or it's going to hit my four ATR profit target. And that's it. But statistically in my favor, more likely that I'm going to make four ATRs than lose two ATRs. And this particular trade, I mean, barely up, but I guess let's be precise. Yeah, it's up 0.12% so far on the trade, but I just got into it. So this is an abandoned baby. This is an abandoned baby here. And by the way, if you'd like to learn more about abandoned babies and island reversals, go to my YouTube channel. I have a uh, video lesson, totally free, um, at, that uh, describes them in a little bit more detail. So brand new trade, bullish abandoned baby up 1.2%. Okay, FedEx, FDX. I took this trade here on the 15th of October. Why? Well, let's take a look at the black line here. This is the 200-day moving average. This is a very important moving average. This strategy, by the way, is the deep dip buy. 
strategy. And again, something that I teach in my in my one on one course, you can also uh, if you like video courses, uh, a link is in the description where I have a course specifically on this strategy at udemy.com. Uh, really, really great course, nine and a half hours. I think it's somewhere between 30 and $50, but um, that's the only strategy that I have on U Udemy. I will be putting more there, but the link's in the description if you'd like to you know, be able to study and learn this particular strategy. But the Deep Dip by strategy incorporates either the 250-day moving average, the 300-day moving average, or the 200-day 200 uh, 200-day moving average. This is the black line. So the day before, you can see we were below the 200-day moving average. Would have worked well here at the 300, would have worked well at the 250, but I took the trade on the 200 because uh, the prior day we went up above the 200-day moving average. I didn't buy it there. I, I could have. It was totally legitimate. But then when I saw it come back and give me a better risk-to-reward ratio, I bought it here. Why is it a better risk to reward ratio? Well, if I buy it here and it closes below the 200, it's better than if I bought it up here and closed below the 200. So uh, move above the 200, came back down, respected the 200, didn't go below it, gave me a better risk to reward ratio. I got in at 266.40, I position size correctly, I placed my emergency stop two ATRs below, my end of bar stop is where? Well, just simply a close below the 200. Even if it was just a penny close below the 200, I would get out. I placed my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level up here, uh, 277.40. So if it gets there, then I go into trailing stop mode. And then again, if it starts moving my way, I'm going to take partial profits. Well, the next day was a big move up, really big move up. And so I did uh, take off two profit targets, lock those in. Reduce my position size down, uh, you know, put that in the piggy bank, and now I have fewer shares. That's right, but you know, if it reverses strongly, now I have fewer shares. Right, it mitigates the loss. So moved up nicely there. Took some profit targets next day. Moved up, took some profit targets as where as as well. No profit targets on Friday. Not to trailing stop level. So if Monday we close below this low, I wouldn't do anything. But if it does get to trailing stop level, then if I have a close below previous bars low, I will get out of half. So deep dip buy, uh, break of the 200, move back down, giving me a better risk reward ratio. So far, this particular trade is up 2.87% this week. And then UNG. Okay. I talked about UNG, that I have been kind of stalking UNG and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for it to come down. Look at this move down. Brutal. This is this strategy is called a um, bullish order block. So what is a bullish order block? A bullish order block is when you have a your lowest close and back here on the 27th of August, this was the lowest close move before market structure change. We broke market structure in here when we took out these swing highs. So now you're in a bullish market structure. So lowest low close, market structure change. If the price comes back to the order block, that is the buyable area. And the exact area that I wanted to buy was halfway of this big up bar. You see this big up bar here on the 29th of August? If you have a big up bar, usually about 50% of that bar, if you come back down to 50% of that bar, that's where you're going to bounce, which is exactly what happened here on the 9th. Look, here on the 29th, we moved up and we came back down a little bit right to that halfway before it took off. So the confluence of this signal, everyone, is one, we have the bullish order block, which is the green box area, and two, we came back down on Friday, 11.03, we came back down exactly to the halfway of this bar that was here on August 29th. So that's the confluence. We're in the buyable order block area anyway, anyway, and to be even more precise, I waited for the halfway of this big up bar on the 29th, and that's where I bought. So I bought on Friday, 1303, 
I position size correctly. I place my emergency stop. How far below? That's right, two ATRs below. Where's my end of bar stop? Well, my end of bar stop is simply a close below that big up bar that I talked about, close below that. Because if we close below here, well, that's a major level. So it's a pretty good risk to reward ratio, right? I'm in at 1303, the uh, end of day stops 1270, of course the emergency stops down here. So I placed my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level above my entry and going forward, you know, if it starts to move up enough, I'll take partial profits. If I get to trailing stop level, then I'll go into trailing stop mode. If it goes down, closes below 1270, I'm just out. Monday, if it just crashes down and hits my emergency stop, what do I do? Once it gets to the emergency stop, I just get out as well. So. Uh, right now, uh, just even on the trade, because I just got into it, bought it at the close, so that one is just totally even at the moment. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Okay, these are the open trades. The Pfizer, the Boeing, the, the TLT, the FedEx, and the UNG are open trades. Uh, I have some closed trades on the daily as well. Okay, so we talked about abandoned babies and island reversals. This one didn't work out. This was one of an abandoned baby that 30% that didn't work out. So I shorted the SPY here at 569.33. Why? Well, because we had a gap up in the SPY and then a gap down going from bullish to bearish very quickly. Most of the time, if you look in the future, this should be lower, but in this particular case, it didn't work. Like I said, they only, in my experience, they work about uh, 30, they work about 70% of the time and you're gonna take loss about 30% of the time. So when I set this up, two ATR stop to the upside, four ATR profit target to the downside, one of the two is gonna happen. Well, unfortunately on the 14th, the SPY was just too strong and it did hit my uh, emergency stop. So I took a loss on that trade of, 2.57%. So that's just how it is. You know, you're going to have losses. You're going to have them all the time. The key is you just want to keep those losses smaller than uh, uh, the gains. That's really it. But not everything works all the time. Uh, but we'll see again. If I get another uh, bearish uh, island reversal or a band of baby, I can always take another shot at it. So this, the loss here on the spy short, I'm out of the trade, loss of 2.57%. And let's go to the final uh, trade, daily trade. Now, this particular trade uh, was a winning trade. I got out because of earnings. But let's talk about when I got in and why I got in. I got in here on the 26th of September. Why? Well, big picture. Again, let's go back to double bottom bullish MACD divergences. Look at the low here with the red bars. We rally here in the area that i bought it are we lower here than here we certainly are but no red bars whatsoever double bottom bullish divergence just because you have a double bottom bullish divergence doesn't mean you just pile into the trade you need to have a trigger well the trigger was a deep dip buy on the day that i bought or the day before i bought it i bought it on the 26th on the 25th we closed under the 30 rsi but the day that i bought it we close back over the 30 RSI. So that was the trigger on the trade. Simply an under 30, over 30, got me into the trade. But big picture, we had a double bottom bullish divergence. That's why I took the trade. So I got in 851, position size correctly, placed my emergency stop 280 R's below. My end of bar stops are simply a close below the 30 RSI, placed my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level. Next day, blast off. What did I do? I took partial profits. I think I hit two partial profits on that day. And also got to trailing stop level. Next day didn't do much. The next day, unfortunately, but I have to follow the rules, we had a close below a previous bar's low. After reaching trailing stop level, I sold half the position for a gain of 2.37%. And then we just kind of moved around here, opened opened, went up, hit another profit target, came back down, but it held the 30 RSI, 
and then we just gradually worked our way up, hit a profit target here, hit a profit target there, but this was the day before earnings, so I had to get out, and you can see what happened with earnings. Obviously, I wish I would have stayed in, but I would have been breaking my rules. I mean, look, when you, when you look at this trade here, I mean, what a great entry, right? But again, I didn't hold through earnings, so I, I did get out of the trade, but I still did on the remaining shares, locked in a gain of 5.44%. So pretty good. And again, this was an this was a deep dip by under 30 over 30. So those are all the daily trades. Just a quick recap, Rema remaining shares on Pfizer up 1.3%. Boeing, remaining shares on Boeing up 3.97%, TLT uh, up 0.12%, FedEx up 2.87%, UNG just barely got into the trade, SPY the loss uh, the, on the short, the loss 2.57%, and uh, WBA uh, out of this trade for a gain of 5.44%. So, you know, you can see just from the mix of daily trades here that I have, I have a lot more winners than losers. And that's that's what it takes in trading, right? And that's why you need a process. You need to follow that process. You need to try to keep your, uh, uh, your losses small and have a process for letting your winners run. So not all winners, uh, but uh, um, pretty happy overall uh, with with the uh, the open and shut daily trades. Okay, so in addition to trading daily time frame, the daily charts, I always I also like to trade the weekly charts. Uh, weekly charts close on Friday, so I make my decision on Friday. I bought Disney all the way back here on the 9th of August. Why? Well, this was a deep dip buy. During the week, we went under the 30 RSI. At the end of the week on Friday, we closed above the 30 RSI. So I got into the trade 85.90, placed my emergency stop two ATRs below. My end of bar stop was a close below 82.95. I placed my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level. Next week, moved up, did hit some uh, partial profits, took the partial profits off. Then for three weeks, we didn't do much. We started to go down. Then we had a little reversal here where I also took some profits. Next week, moved up again, also took some profits, also got to trailing stop level. So now I'm in trailing stop mode. If it closes below previous bars low, I'm out of the trade. Then we kind of move sideways here. This particular week, we got close to closing below the previous bars low, but it didn't close below kept me in the trade and then this week had a nice week up of 3.35 percent and I also hit one particular profit target uh, earnings out here on the 14th of November so of course I'll exit the trade uh, regardless if I'm still in it by then but the remaining shares here on uh, Disney up 11.56 percent so again this was a deep dip buy under 30 over 30 11.56% gain, so pretty nice. QLD. All right, QLD is a short position. This one is underwater. I've talked a lot about, uh, you know, bullish fair value gaps, bullish order blocks. Well, this is the opposite. This is a bearish setup. It's underwater so far, but you can see this red box here. Why this red box? Well, this is an order block. This is your highest up bar close before market structure change. So if you change market structure from up from up market structure to a down market structure, then if you get back in to that bearish order block anywhere in this big red area, that is the shortable area. So I did short back here on September 27th at $100.20. Why? Well, because one, it's in the bearish order block, two, it rejected halfway of this big down bar. See the big down bar? Well, we got to halfway. So it rejected, I got short here. Uh, my emergency stop is two ATRs above. My end of bar stop is simply a close above this high, the bar where I shorted it. The high was 103.12. Right now we're at 102.94. So I'm still in the trade because it did not close above that. Got close, but it kept me in the trade. So this particular trade is down 
the market's just been so strong, it's been kind of hard to get any shorts to work. This is down 2.67%, but I'm still in the trade. If it closes above 103.12, then I'm out of the trade. If it moves down, obviously because if it's a short, I'll take partial profits. Okay, uh, and then Apple. Apple is one that I did get out of. Same thing. We had a bearish order block. We changed market structure to the downside. And I got short here at 228.80. Same thing. We're in the bearish order block. We got to halfway. This particular trade shows why it's good to take partial profits uh, because the next week it immediately went down and I did take some profits, thankfully, right? I locked in some profits, reduced my short position. Next week, didn't do much. The next week we opened way down. I did again take some partial profits. Did not get to trailing stop level. Had it got to trailing stop level, then I would be out with close above uh, previous bars high. And so my stop was a close above this order block here, 232.81, and it did do that on Friday. So I did take a loss on Apple, closed out the trade for a loss of 2.8. 62%. So not as good on the weeklies as the dailies, but all in all still profitable because Disney um, up 11.56%, QLD down 2.67%, and Apple closed out the position at 2.62%. So, okay, those are all the trades, the dailies and the weeklies. And, um, and anyway, like I said, I hope that was uh, helpful. And so let's now talk a little bit about trader psychology. Okay, this post comes from Trading Composure, at Trading Composure over on Twitter. Uh, take a look there. I uh, really like this channel and uh, always post good, uh, uh, good, succinct posts. But, you know, this is important here. You set yourself up for success by trading small. And there is a magic to trading small. You know, if you're a beginner or even if you're a very experienced trader, but you are going through a drawdown at the moment, there is a magic in trading small. It just makes you trade better. Why does it make you trade better? Well, because it's a smaller position. The pressure is not as high. You're more likely to follow your process. And listen, at the end of the day, everyone, Following the process is the only thing that matters. That's how you're going to make money. It's not going to be by your impulsive moves one day, impulsive moves the other day. Oh, oh, I made money on that impulsive move. Well, good. But in the long run, it's not going to work. You need a systematic approach and you need to follow that approach. And just by trading smaller, you're going to be more likely to trade that longer term. You're going to be more likely to trade that process the way it was designed. If you have a much bigger position, man, you're going to be tempted to just get out the second it goes against you a little bit or the second it goes your, your way a little bit. So there is a magic in trading small. And again, if you're a, a, a beginning trader, well, makes sense, right? You're just trying to work stuff out. But eat, even if you're a most experienced trader, if you're in a drawdown, every successful trader will tell you, trade small, trade smaller, trade smaller until you start to make some money. So set, you set yourself up for success by trading small. small. Small trade sizes favor the process, right? What I was just talking about. Small trade sizes favor the process of building mastery by allowing you to make plenty of mistakes and trading losses. These experiences help you understand the game and figure out what wins. So if you're new to trading and let's say you study with me and you know, I've done this for 29 years. I know in the long run that my approaches win more than they lose, but you don't know that as a beginning trader, you don't know that, but by trading small, you don't have as much heat on you. There's not as much pressure and you can actually watch and see these things over time win more than they lose. And so then when you increase your position size, you have more confidence in that your uh, trading strategies are working. So again, whether you're a beginning trader or an experienced trader, 
that's in a drawdown, trade smaller, trade smaller, follow that process. It's magical how much more money you make when you trade small. So one more time, you set yourself up, you set yourself up for success by trading small. Small trade size favors the process of building mastery by allowing you to make plenty of mistakes and trading losses. These experiences help you understand the game and figure out what wins. So anyway, hopefully that was helpful for you. And you can follow Trading Composure at Trading Composure over on Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it these days. Okay, let's get to the potential trades for next week. Now, I always like to start this off by saying, look, here I have seven potential trades for next week. It is possible that all of these trades could trigger on Monday or Tuesday. Does that mean I'm going to take all the trades? No. I'm only going to take the best trades. I don't care if I have 10 trades that trigger on Monday or Tuesday or whatever. I'm going to narrow those seven or those 10 trades down to the very best trade. How do I do that? Well, which one has the most confluence as the signals? Which one has the best risk to reward ratio? Which one looks the best technically on higher time frames, right? If I'm trading the daily, I like to look to the weekly to look for confluences and signals on that higher time frame. And which one was the strongest or weakest relative to the rest of the market? That sometimes is the tiebreaker. So it's very important, the devil's in the details on how to narrow down and pick the best trade when you have a handful of options. And again, this is what I teach you in my private one-on-one -on -one course, all right? So just wanna get that out of the way that even if all of these trigger, I am not gonna take all of them, I'm gonna narrow them down. Okay, FXY, FXY is the Japanese yen. Uh, you can see I've highlighted some bearish island reversals. Well, I guess it nailed that one, didn't it? Here's a, here's a bearish abandoned baby. I guess it nailed that one. Here is a bearish island reversal. Pretty good. Bullish abandoned baby. Pretty good. Look at this island reversal all the way down here. Indicating higher prices. Was it right? I would say so. So we don't have an abandoned baby, bullish abandoned baby at the moment, but we are back to the 200 day moving average again deep dip by. So this area here, and I, I may miss it. It may just take off without me and not come down. That's fine, right? But if we come back down and bounce at this 200 day moving average or go under it during the day, close back above it, that's a rejection of a major level. That's probably a trade. But the nice thing is, is that if it just barely, if it comes down, just barely closes above the 200, then it gives me a very good risk to reward ratio. If, it, if the next day it just closes below the 200, I simply get out of the trade. That's it. That's the key. Waiting for a market to get to a major level and reject that level, which I'm still waiting for here, position size correctly, putting the trade on and having rules. Hey, as long as it stays above the 200, I'm in, I'm bullish. If it keeps moving up, I'll start to take partial profits, so forth and so on, right? But if it just closes below the 200 day moving average, I just simply get out. I just simply get out. I can always get back in if it closes back above, makes sense? So FXY, what I'm looking for here is uh, next week is a rejection of the 200 day moving average. The black line giving me a good risk to reward ratio. All right, let's go to Google, G-O-O-G-L also a deep dip buy. I took this trade on Google here, all the way back here on the ninth. Why? Deep dip buy at the 300. Look at that great risk to reward ratio. Look at that great trade that I had. I did get out, I can't remember here, maybe when it closed below the five, but still was a wonderful, beautiful trade. And now it uh, got a little over its skis. It's coming back down. I'm waiting to see if it will come back down and test that 200 day moving average. If it does, I'll consider taking the trade as long as it's a good risk to reward ratio. If it just moves up without me, then that's fine. I'll just wait for a market that gets to where I want it to get to. So right now I look at Google and say, I don't want anything to do with you unless I see you come back down, reject that 200 day moving average and give me a good risk to reward ratio. Rio, R-I-O. All right. Just wanna highlight 
some more island reversals, abandoned babies. Look at this bearish island reversal, down. Look at this bullish abandoned baby, up. Look at this bearish island reversal, down. Well, look, we had an abandoned baby, a bullish abandoned baby on Friday. I didn't take the trade. I'm going to see if it comes back down a little bit. But why was it a, a bullish abandoned baby? Well, on the 16th of October, we gapped down. We gapped down. Friday, we gapped up, leaving this abandoned by itself here. I could have taken the trade. I mean, it's totally legitimate on Friday. I didn't take the trade. But what I did notice is... The 200-day moving average here, you can see it It already went there, rejected it. There were no more sellers underneath, came back above. I'm going to see if it comes back down and rejects the 200-day moving average. Again, it was a legitimate trade on Friday, 100% legitimate on Friday. But I'm going to see if it comes back down, back test that 200. If it does, I will definitely consider. But there's a lot of bullish things going on here with Rio after this big, huge move down so i'll just have to see next week what happens but you know for the purpose of this podcast uh for me um you know the 200 would would be a rejection of the 200 next week would make a lot a lot of sense so we'll see what happens and it may just take off without me and that that's okay as well but the 200 makes a lot of sense 200 just by itself makes a lot of sense but makes even more sense in the context that we had this bullish uh, abandoned baby at the same time. Bonds. Oh, I put that in there as a mistake. I'm already in bonds. As I mentioned, I got in Thursday because of the abandoned baby, bullish abandoned baby, and then pull back uh, to close the gap. So sorry, that one's a mistake. Tesla. Okay, so Tesla you can see it's been moving sideways, sideways, sideways. Well, I guarantee you one thing. After this much sideways motion, sideways motion always leads to trends. So the only problem is I don't know if the trend's down or if the trend's up, right? That's that's the rub. But sideways motion, just as a general trading concept, sideways motion, or in other words, indecisiveness, leads to trends one way or the other. If it comes back down to this 200-day moving average or this 250-day moving average, the two areas that I highlighted in green, then I would consider simply just based upon uh, a deep dip buy, right? I, my, my, gut, my gut's telling me that the 200-day moving average is kind of the location I want to be at because if you look back in time, you see how we got right to that 200-day. I took this trade back here on the 28th of August, we bounced, gave me a good risk reward ratio at the 200 day and had a really nice trade. So if it gets back to the 200, you know, whenever you're looking at a moving average to see whether or not, uh, do I want to take this moving average, look in the past and see if it was respected last time. And if it was, it's probably a pretty good sign that more likely than not, it will respect it this time, but obviously not every single time. So I am looking at Tesla, uh, it has not participated with the rest of the market. So it is weaker. I am certain that the this sideways motion will either just lead to a huge move up or a move down. But if it does move down, I will consider it if it rejects the 200 day moving average. But I'll have to consider whether or not I really want to take the trade because earnings is coming and I don't hold through earnings. So, you know, really what might happen next week is that after earnings, it brings to the 200. And then if it rejects the 200 there, then I would consider it. So earnings always throws a little bit of a curveball at you as well. But um, not going to hold through earnings. So if it gets there next week and it only gives me one day before earnings, I, I, I'm not going to take the trade. So let's see. That's the 23rd. So more than likely on this one, after earnings, if it rejects the 200-day moving average, then that's probably where I would consider buying it. Oil. All right. Let's look at oil here. Oil, you can see the green box. What is this green box? This is a bullish order block, meaning that this is the lowest 
here on the 26th, the lowest bar close before market structure change. If that happens, if you get back into the order block, that's probably the area that you would want to consider buying it. So it's not there. Really kind of what I'm looking for here, everyone, next week is that we would come down a little lower, test the top of that order block, bounce off that order block, close above that order block. That's where I would most likely enter the trade. My stop would be a close under the low of the order block. And of course, I had my 200 day moving average. I'm sorry, my two ATR emergency stop as well. So, you know, it might just take off from here. Maybe it gaps up on Monday. What would that be? Then you'd have a bullish uh, abandoned baby, right? Since we gap down from Thursday to Friday, gap down Friday or Monday, if we gap up, then that would be a bullish abandoned baby. I might consider taking it there, uh, but I don't know if that's going to happen yet. So, um, you know, the only thing I do know is that it does come down, rejects this order block, or maybe gets into halfway of the order block. Then it just gives me a good risk reward ratio. And this is the buy, this would be the buyable area. So that's USO. And then last but not least is the dollar UUP. Well, here we have a clear abandoned baby. Do you see how th Wednesday we gapped up and then on Friday we gapped down? Okay more than likely looking into the future, the dollar will be lower by the next time I do this podcast. Probably 70% chance that will happen. But there is a 30% chance that it could go up, right? Not always right. So where I am, this, this was shortable on Friday, technically, but do you see how I drew the line here at 2907? This is the bottom of the abandoned baby. If it closes the gap there, that would be an ideal spot for me to short. And then at that point, two ATR profit target to the downside. I'm sorry, four ATR profit target to the downside, two ATR profit or stop loss to the upside, right? Because I want to make sure that if I make money on this trade, it's twice as much as if I'm losing. So if it does come up here to about 2907, I would consider shorting it, two ATR stop for ATR profit target. Okay, so those are the daily trades, the FXY, Google, uh, Rio, TLT, Tesla, USO, and UUP. And then I do have a couple here on the weekly. All right, here's Adobe. I have talked about Adobe for a couple weeks here. There is a confluence going on here. One, 200 week moving average here. Uh, it did test it on two weeks ago. I didn't take the trade. I'm waiting for it to come back down, either test the 200 week moving average. Ideally, I'd really like to see the little blue box within the green box. That 250 week moving average would make a lot of sense. So I'm not ruling out taking it with a rejection of the, of the 200, the black line. Um, I'll just have to see what happens. If we go below it, close above it, I would consider taking it there. Or if it goes lower, rejects the 250-day moving average, which is the purple line. And the confluence here is that you can see this uh, green box. What is this green box? Well, it's a bullish fair value gap, right? There's three bars, bar one, two, and three. The high of bar one, the low of bar three creates this green box. And this green box dovetails with the 200 and the 250-week moving average. So I think this is a viable area here. Uh, from a confluence standpoint, just waiting to see whether or not it rejects the 200, the black line, or the purple line, the 250. And then last but not least on the weekly is uh, Southwest Airlines. You can see it's a red box, so this is an order block. This is your highest up bar close before market structure change. If it gets back up into this red box here, I will consider shorting and then my stop would be just a close of the high over 34.62, which is the high of the order block. So those are the daily and the weekly setups that I'm looking at for next week. I hope it was helpful for you. Like I said before, if it was, I really would appreciate if you could hit the thumbs up button or subscribe to the channel. Really does help out the channel. Um, you know, if you're interested in studying with me again, I do teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons. It's a great course, 15 hours five sessions. Each session is three hours. I promise you, you will be a better trader when you're done taking this course, learning 
from your instructor one-on-one -on -one, I think is the best way to learn anything and that's why I format the lessons this way so uh, just go to my uh, uh, my contact information is in the description of this YouTube video reach out to me so we can get a discussion started and uh, I know it's worth every penny that that the the course that I teach is worth every penny again uh, I have the uh, Udemy course on the deep dip buy the links in the description it's a very good course I think I have like 4.9 stars on that course and uh, you get a lot for the 30 or 50 dollars the price isn't up to me it's up to you to me and they change it but uh, for that amount you get a lot of things and you learn a lot um, uh, as far as the deep dip buy and uh, you know I always like to leave off everyone if you could please go out and try to do something nice for another human being uh, each day it would make the world a better place if you could go out do one nice thing for an animal today that would make the world a better place humans and animals both appreciate acts of kindness so I try to do that every day uh, it's kind of a goal for me and it makes me feel good too so I hope you have a good rest of your weekend everybody um, uh, and uh, I really appreciate you spending the time I really do so God willing I'll see you next week and on the way out here I have to run the US legal disclaimer Thanks so much, everyone, and have a good have a good weekend. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. U.S. government required disclaimer: stock options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice, and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind, which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit no representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors, such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.